Hey, welcome back to the Community Leader Podcast here in Salina, Kansas. I'm your host, Todd Welsh, and today my good friend Monty Shadwick joins us and talks about all of his entrepreneurial ventures he's done throughout the year. I met Monty back in the 1990s when he owned Shooter's Bar and Grill downtown. He transitioned over into real estate. He's owned the Paramount at one point in time. He's been a partner in the Cozy Inn, and right now he runs the Blue Sky Brewery, and we talked to him about how that came about and what his current vision is for it. We talk about Salina downtown, uh, the Star Bonds, fully packed episode. Let's check in with my good friend, Monty Shadwick. All right, so welcome my good friend, Monty Shadwick. He's with us today to the Community Leader Podcast. Welcome, Monty. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I finally got you here. I know, I know. It's been a few times. <laughs> so it was, I hope it's worth the wait. Yeah, I hope so too. Yeah, one of the first two or three guys I called after yeah. we put the Community Leader Podcast together. And I went, if I could just get a little bit of what Monty knows about Salina, the history, the downtown... Everything that you know, I'm hoping some of it comes out today. We have some good stories together. I'm going to tell how I first met you. Right. Um, we're going to talk about the old downtown when I used to work there back in the 90s. Right. Uh, and so a lot of stuff going to come out today. But uh, before we get started, we got to talk about mochas first. You got your coffee? I do. We got to do the mochas minute. Thank you to uh, mochas and uh, JRI. <laughs> and uh, this morning I picked up, what did you get this morning? Uh, decaf coffee, I think. Decaf coffee, you think? <laughs> That's what it is, decaf okay, coffee. good. good. Uh, and I have the uh, famous hot chocolate. There you uh, go. I, I think they ought to name it the, the Todd Chocolate down there because that's you what go. I get all the time is the, right. the uh, Todd Hot Chocolate. But anyway, uh, thank you to Mocha's uh, for sponsoring the uh, podcast, and we're going to get into it so we can talk a little bit about everything that you know. Very good. Uh, first of all, tell me a little bit about your family and how long you've been in Salina. Yeah, I've been in Salina since 1968. So we moved here um, from Washington, D.C., my dad uh, ran for Congress and um, unsuccessfully, and during that time met the, the owners of First National Bank, and so they hired him to be the president. So we moved here, and I, I actually spent my first night in Salina downtown. I was at the old Hilton. and um, Which is now where the field house is. Exactly. Correct? Well, okay. it, yeah, the field house and iron, uh, the insurance. Iron insurance, mm -hmm, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, I, I mean, I've, I've been connected to downtown since 1968. Dad obviously was the president there for 18 years. And so um, that's how I got to Salina. Um, currently, um, I've, I've got four kids. Um, Janelle's my wife, and I met her. She was the architect on Shooters. I never knew who she, she was. Oh. And I, I had called John Shaver <laughs> up and, and asked him to uh, be the architect. And he goes, well, I, you know, I don't have time, but I've got this young um, – you know, lady that just graduated from college. So that's how Janelle and I met. So I didn't know uh, that. Yeah. So we've been married 34 years now, have four kids. Uh, three of them work at Blue Sky. Sam obviously runs the um, pizza oven and um, Tommy runs the back line. And then Annie works out front and does the baking. So awesome. it's kind of a family affair. Um, Will, my, um, my other son is a sports architect in Kansas City. Okay. So, so two big things you mentioned there that at the viewers don't know shooters nobody if you aren't here back in the day right. you won't even know what shooters mean so that's right. a bar and grill that you started but i really want to talk about that right because that's where i met you right secondly you said blue sky so blue sky is your current project and congratulations you just said you're going to celebrate 10 years this I, year i can't believe it i just can't believe it i remember start uh, you know starting going Oh, let's just don't embarrass yourself and open, <laughs> stay open for a couple of years because, yeah. you know, we were really out of our league when we started. And we just tried to get better every year, and, and I think we're doing okay. Yeah, so. yeah, it's a beautiful place, and we'll get into that a little bit later on how it started. But um, let's go all the way back to, so, 68. So where did you graduate? Um, elementary school, where did you go to? Metal Arc. So Metal Arc. Yep. And yeah. then to uh, right so, downtown, which would be the middle school. Yeah. That what is, was that called? Like, Roosevelt Lincoln. Roosevelt Lincoln. So that is now obviously Pioneer Place. Correct. And so one side was the seventh grade, one side was the eighth grade, and there actually was a building in between that has been de demolished that was the cafeteria and all the gyms. Yeah, see, I so. like to tell that because, <clears throat> again, I'm hoping somebody watches this 20 years from now, mm -hmm. 10 years from now, mm -hmm. and, they, and they're either new to Salina or they didn't really know that. But between the two big buildings – uh, they Pioneer Place tore all those down. So that was the yeah. cafeteria and the gyms. Right. Now it's just a big open courtyard. Sure, sure. Uh, and parking lots and things like that. But right. it used to be that's where all the gym and cafeteria was. Absolutely. And then uh, you got smart enough to get out of the eighth grade. I did. And, and you uh, made it over to Central? Salina Central. So you were a Mustang. I was a Mustang, yeah. 
And what year did you graduate? 1978. So 1978. So, so we just had our 45th reunion. And um, anyway, great memories there. There's a couple of your classmates in town that we would know. Who would you graduate with? Craig Renfro would okay. be would be one. Uh, Mike White that works at um, uh, Blake Blackham's place. or, or in, um, At this uh, the Midwest? Midwest Music. Yep. Uh-huh. Rod Glavin. Yeah. You know, just some other. Uh, yeah. Some of your old buddies. Yeah. Yeah. Was, uh, we, we still hang out. That's so. cool. That's cool. Okay, so let's take me to about, um, I don't know, if you're 16, 17, 18, getting ready to graduate high school. Mm -hmm. What was Monty? Where did, where, did you go to college then? Or? Yeah, I went straight from Salinas Central. I went to uh, KU. Okay. So I didn't know um, that either. Yeah, gradu and then I became a teacher, um, and I was down at Goddard. I was a high school basketball coach and a teacher. So and from Goddard, where did you go? And then I went back to K-State this time and got my master's in business. So. Okay. And then back to Salina? And then back to Salina. Okay. And then that's when I started Shooters. Okay. So let's get into that then, because right. here's where <laughs> I want to get into that. So <clears throat> Shooters Bar and Grill. Right. Um, so the location would be right next door to where your dad was the president at the time, because First National was there, correct? Correct. <clears throat> so right next to that, which is now, uh, so it was Shooters, and then they turned it into Capers. Capers. Is that correct? Capers. Then Capers turned into Mocha's. Mocha's. And, and then, then and then and then there was a uh, oh, the okay. Cajun restaurant. Cajun restaurant. And then there hasn't been anything in there since then. Yeah. So we only have, and it was the old Shelton's clothing store. Okay. And um, Charlie Roth ended up buying Shelton's clothing store, and he moved it out to his location on Ohio. Okay. So that that became available, and um, I was actually working at First National Bank at the time in the trust department, and wanted to get. In, into the business, um, you know, at the bar. And, and I thought, you know, things were really cheap back then downtown. Yeah. So <clears throat> I actually did not own that building. Um, Brad Stewie owns it or okay. owned it. And I approached him and, and um, we came up with the idea. And then, of course, I met Janelle and, and, and we built that there. So yeah. uh, that was a great 11 year run. I had a, so so you had shooters for 11 years. Right. <clears throat> so how, well, like, I can remember, but so when I moved here, I was 19. Right. I was working next door at First National, shredding paper in the basement with Dean. If you remember a guy named Dean, who was the maintenance guy that was there, and uh, shredding paper. And then I would go next door to Shooters and and one of the first bars. So I guess I shouldn't tell on you, but I was 19. And <laughs> but you could go in your bar at 19 because you served lunch. You had one yeah, of the yeah, best we, lunch things ever. Yeah, yeah, we we served food and and. Um... Yeah, the, I the, wouldn't tell you I was there after eight <laughs> o'clock. I did not go there after eight yeah. and partake in anything that I shouldn't have. Right, right. You guys were all legit. Everyone card, but that's one thing I remember. You had the prettiest girls working there. I mean, they. I, I, it was, it was great food. You were back there cooking a lot of the times. Uh, it was the place to be. Like yeah. I can remember between Shooters and Paramount, which is another story we'll get yeah, into. Right. So Shooters and Paramount, like Shooters, was the place when I moved to Salina. Right. You had one of the best pubs, bars, whatever yeah. you would call that downtown. Peanut on the floor beer joint. Yeah. Know? Yeah. But it was the place to hang out. Right. And so you ran it great. Uh, but I would remember you being very young. Yeah. I would in have, my eyes. Yeah. I would have been in my uh, 30. 30? 30. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you seemed young to, uh, yeah. to me. I mean, to own that business. You know, right. I moved here from Denver and I was watching you run this business and you, it was packed all the time. You had the prettiest bartender girls who wanted to work for you it was a great time so it yeah. was a great time <laughs> yeah and was, then and then let's tell us about what happened then to shooters and because this is a great entrepreneurial learning lesson of why you had to shut shooters down right we uh lost our lease basically and i wasn't the building owner and um i, I had signed two five-year leases and then got a, uh, an extension just for one year in the back of my mind i was like uh-oh yeah <laughs> so um yeah, I wasn't in control of my own destiny, yep. and um, and so so lost that, and, um, and 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 that was okay, you know. Um, but then I just thought, well, I'd like to do something, and so that's when we bought the Paramount. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> I started working at Blue Beacon at the time. Okay. But I still, my employees from Shooters wanted to do something, and so. You know, we just took that over. And, and that was more of a sentimental thing for me. That's where I had my first beer in my life. That's where I got um, engaged. Oh, I, you did? I proposed to my wife at the Paramount because Very. that's where we met. I didn't know and that. And so, yeah, when we went, uh, when it was time to propose, we 
went back and played darts. And remember when Paramount had the shuffleboard table? Sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's how I met Pam. Uh, she has a different story. It was like, I beat her at shuffleboard. And then she's like, well, I'm really good at darts. And then I beat her at darts. And she still went out with me. Yeah. And so when it came time to engage, uh, I proposed to her. That's I nice. took her back down there and got on my knees while we were playing darts. Nice. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's how that all happened. But Do you, do you remember the old um, bowling machine there? It was in the front window. I do up against the yeah, north wall. Yeah, and you would shoot going back towards the front. Yeah. yeah oh yeah, yeah, I do remember that. Yeah, I do. Who I remember the most is is Andy. Now I don't. Right. Is Andy still alive? No, no, he passed away. Did he really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. So Andy had some of the biggest sandwich. You would go down there, and for like three dollars, okay, well, you would get a sandwich that was this big from Andy. I apologize, Andy that that started the Paramount Ruby and Andy. Oh, okay. that's my that's the Andy that I remember because oh. he was a. You know, he he and I really connected when I was. Well, young. we just lost a bunch of viewers now. Going, yeah. shit, Andy died. I yeah. didn't even know. Andy. I'm sorry, Andy. We're <laughs> <laughs> Andy Dewitt. Andy Dewitt is yeah, who I remember. Sorry, yeah, right. I'm sorry. So he's still alive. I I think so. Okay, so all I, right. Well, that's who I remember down there. Uh, yeah. So we'll leave it at that. So right. uh, the old bowling machine. I wonder where that's at now. Yeah, that's. You, you never know. We're going to put that out on high. So if anybody knows where the old bowling machine is from the old Paramount. Yeah, those are arcade businesses. You know, that was something that wasn't owned by the Paramount. The shuffleboard and everything. Those were just that ar- arcade like companies. Like Hawk Vending. Yeah, that's, that's, that sort of thing. So yeah. it probably just rotated out. But, yeah. And it was noisy. Yeah. yeah. So did you take the bowling machine out then? No. No, okay, that was so all. was gone before? Yeah, and the shuffleboard was gone before too, so. Okay. They just needed the space, and yeah. it got pretty packed in there. Yeah. So yeah. you own the Paramount for a while. So you're working at Blue Beacon. You own the Paramount. Mm-hmm. That thing's up and running. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did the Cozy Inn come in? You Because you were an owner of the Cozy as well, right? Right. So that would have come back in during the, the shooter's days. All the way back so, then? Yeah. Okay. So um, the Pickerings both passed away, and um, the lawyers in the United Building, Clancy King, they were running it. And... Uh, you know, he, he was doing a great job, but, you know, he wasn't there on a daily basis. And um, so I approached him and and uh, said I'd like to to buy it, you know, not not to necessarily to work it, but I just didn't want to see it go downhill and yeah. did not want to see the I, – I was even afraid it was going to close, you know, because it just needed somebody. So anyway, so I gave him a price, and he came back and said, well, I've got another bid. And I said, well, I'll buy up my price. And – came back and said well I've got another bid and I was like so I was sitting up at the country club one day with Max Holthaus and having a beer and I just said Max I'm trying to buy the cozies but somebody keeps outbidding me and he goes that's you because <laughs> <laughs> he was the other guy he was the other guy oh wow so we shook hands and we walked down into Clancy's office the next day and said the gig's up baby yeah. you know? <laughs> <laughs> So then he and I became partners, and we took it over. So Nice. But I, th- that was never uh, something that I wanted to do forever. Um, you know, Steve Howard is there now, and he's the rightful owner, and he'll yeah. keep it going forever. And that, that was my purpose is yeah. just to keep it going. So for history, let's do a little history and see if you know this, because I've got a story. I want to see if it's correct. And I either dreamt this or I actually talked to the lady, and I wouldn't remember if she was still alive when it would, would be Miss Pickering maybe. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I don't know if I actually talked to her or – so you tell me the story. Let's talk about the, gr- the story the of the grill. Yeah. Here's my story. You tell me what the real story is. I heard that they did a little bit of a remodel. Somebody took the grill out, and I heard it made it all the way to the dump, which later I heard it didn't. Mm-hmm. I heard it made it all the way to the dump, and then they put in a new grill, and people kept complaining that the burgers didn't taste the right. same. So they took out the grill and went to the dump and got the other grill and put it back in. Right. Now, that's the story I always heard. It's close. I did run into the Pickering lady. I swear I did. And she said the grill was in their backyard, like under their deck or porch or something. It never made it to the dump. Gotcha. Now, I don't know. You tell me what you know. Well, there used to be the Elks Lodge used to be right next door where where the parking lot is now. Okay. So there was – it was a two big – two-story building. So there was just a little – alleyway in between the two buildings my recollection of the story and max has kind of backed it up a little bit is they just took it and stuck it in that alley you know with the elements and everything and so what i've never found out is how long it was there and how long the new grill was in there but yes definitely it came back yeah yeah (laughs) Yeah, and i and i think that's what i don't know where she told me exactly when but i knew she had told me that it at it 
didn't go to the dump. Right. You know, like I had heard the story, it went to the dump. So if you're at the cozy, it didn't like make it in. They, they didn't <laughs> bury the grill, and it wasn't in there with all the all the garbage. It right. like got rolled around the corner, and then they brought it back. But isn't that a fascinating story? It is, and it's a unique taste. And that's uh, yeah, that's it's like throwing away an old cast iron, you know, pan. Yeah. I mean, you just can't do that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then I've heard these stories about where the guy rolls through town in a brand new like Cadillac on the way back to like Nebraska, he stops and gets them, eats them or whatever. And they couldn't get the smell Smell out out of the new car forever, you know, and like they just couldn't get it out. So great stories. And what is that? 101 years old now? Yeah. I think I remember the hundredth anniversary. 1922. So now it's, yeah, it's probably 101. And slider joints were a real big thing back in the twenties and the thirties. And and that's just what those were called. So how long did you own that? Just me personally, uh, I was in it for about three, three and a half years. That's all. Yeah. Okay. And then we sold that, and then just just Max bought, you know, Max and Butch bought me out, and then they sold it to Steve Howard. So, okay, yeah. And then the Paramount, then the Paramount comes after that. Then you mm-hmm. buy the Paramount, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. And how long did you own that? I've uh, about nine years. Okay, about nine years. And again, that I did not ever own the building. Ruby Ruby owned the building. Okay. And so then when I sold it to uh, Kevin, the current owner, um, and then when Ruby passed, uh, he bought the building from from ruby so okay yep yeah uh, downtown's changed it has it really has uh up there so when you went from the paramount then you went back to teaching a little bit is did that take you did you leave there and then you yeah. were at blue beacon paramount and then you ended up yeah. back at kansas west i know you think? They're, they're, I've, I've worn lots of shoes i tell you but they're all great so they're, <laughs> they're all great uh did blue beacon and then um uh worked for jim may's compro realty okay we did that and then um, Congressman Moran uh, approached me, and um, he was opening a, an office in Salina. And so I ran his Salina office for about five years. Um, and our office was in the United Building. Okay. So, um, and then uh, he became senator. And so then I just moved on, and then I became a professor at Wesleyan. Okay. So that's, that's so that got you the professor at West. So now you're a professor at Wesleyan. So right. we're up to this. What year is that, maybe? Um, okay. I'm testing you. I know. I know. Let's just uh, say 2000, 10, 2010. 2010. Okay. Yeah. But in between time, some funny stories that I know about you is, is you had a real strong um, for real estate. Yeah. You, you still, I'm sure you still love real estate. Right. Yeah. And but you uh, you own several downtown buildings and yeah. were able to to. You have an eye for buying them and being able to do that. So at right. one time, how many floors did you own of the United Building? I, I bought out Kennedy & Co.'s uh, five floors. So you owned five floors of the United Building. Right. So, And I remember, you know, we were all concerned when Kennedy & Co. left downtown. I mean, that was a huge customer base for me at, at Shooters and, you know, wherever. Right. Paramount, and it was just good for downtown. And everybody was like, who's going to? Who's going to fill that space? I mean, uh, how do you get, uh, you know, what company has 100 employees that can fill that space? So I was, I was a big walker, and I was just walking and walking. And then one day it just hit me. It just hit me that why do you have to fill up all the spaces? Why can't you just sell each floor to different people or, or you know, right. get multiple people in there? And I was in my sweats and everything, walked up to the sixth floor and or seventh floor, and uh, Kurt Seamers was there, and I walked into his office, and I gave him a low balled him an offer, and he says, I, and, he, and he says, um, okay. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> and I was just taken aback, and I said, well, I want all the furniture, too. I don't know why I said that. <laughs> he goes, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, that's fine. Nobody so, wants to take it down that elevator anyway. Wants, so yeah. all of a sudden, I'm like, wow. Here we go. So, I would have loved to have seen you take the elevator ride down yeah. when you just bought five, five floors, floors and all the furniture. <laughs> all the furniture. I'll go home and tell your wife that story. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. That was interesting. So right away, it was just like, okay, this you're not going to find anybody. And so we were really successful. And, and um, it was just a nice turn for me. I mean, yeah. you know, you just sold individual floors. and and because that, that's kind of how the it was set up anyway so it was kind of a condo situation with the lawyers see i was going to ask on there whether when when when, th- when we think that thing got condoed because it was originally built as the new york life building correct? right yeah and so it's uh gosh we can't see it it's on the back side over here right. so new york life building so it was all owned by them so you think when they sold it do you know the history of that when I new york life I, sold it did <clears throat> they condo it out then it would have been um it would have been back in the 40s or the 50s though. okay i mean it would have been yeah, when Kennedy and Co. started growing, and then obviously Hampton Royce, and then all the all the law, law firms. So um, 
I was, you know, and again, that was a success story, not necessarily because of me. It's just, it was just empty space that got filled. Yeah. Now let's do some history here of what you remember. So if the United building, what we're talking about, right, right across the street from that is now a parking lot. The Salina Journal. Which was the Salina Journal. Mm-hmm. And they tore that building. And then next to that, which is now the museum, that was the post, post office. Post office. Okay. And then across the street from the post office was the library and the YMCA. Okay. So the, I grew up at the, I mean, that, that's just, my memories from when I was a kid is at the YMCA. I mean, that's just. Which would be uh, the parking lot The now? parking lot across from the church. Okay. Right. And had a swimming pool in the basement and yeah. Wow. I know. And that's where um, my, my uh, father-in-law, um, Roger Fink, he owned uh, Sight Shoes for 50 years. Wow, I do remember that. He and Headley uh, came down from Downs one day, right, when they got out of high school. And, and um, that's where you got rooms. Uh, it was at the Y. They stayed at the Y. And, and every morning uh, they'd go walk downtown looking for, looking for work. And Roger was hired by um, Mr. Sights. I had the shoe store at the time, and, and Headley was hired by um, Jake Smith, I think. I might be wrong on that one. But anyway, that's how those guys got downtown. Wow. I just think that's a neat story just to be able to stay at the Y and, and just, yeah. and, you know, long-time people downtown. So Yeah. See, well, the way I remember downtown is the names I'll throw out are the Paul Wardens. Yeah. Paul and Mary Wardens, who owned Wardens great, forever. Great people. Yeah. Chuck and Liz Carroll. Mm-hmm. That's back when I was on the downtown board, you yeah, know, and right. you were at Shooters, and I was over at Anderson Leather. Yeah. <clears throat> and Harold really, Cooley. Harold Cooley. Uh, gosh, who owned? Uh, Coletta Johnson. Coletta Johnson. That's what I was going to say. The Loft. Wasn't that called The right, Loft? Right, The Loft. Yeah, uh, Coletta Johnson. And and that's how I kind of got my start was being right. around Andy Anderson, introducing me to people like you mm-hmm. and the, uh, the, the – the, oh, who was the – Phil Rose and Sons? What, yeah. The, so – Ned. Ed okay. Rose. Yes, yeah. Ed Rose. Mm-hmm. Uh, all of those people right. um, who were downtown. And um, and that's how I really got to know some people downtown and really started to care about downtown. Right. And, and, and you and I both talked about the changes that it's been. Now, one person said one time that they remembered, you know, tumbleweeds rolling. Like, when I came here, downtown was pretty – it was cool for me coming from Denver and you came into an old town. It was pretty good. And then right. there for a while, it never got rough. Let's not just say that. But we had a lot of vacant buildings. Sure. We were trying to figure out what to do with them. Right. Um, and then this revitalization uh, kind of came about. And uh, you may know some more about that than mm-hmm. I do. Um, before we get into that, though, I want to know, do you know, somebody told me the other day the scheme. Do you know how far the scheme pizza goes back at all? Yeah. Oh, yeah. When, when I was in high school. Okay. Yeah. But Dwayne didn't start that, did he? Correct. He did Okay. Not. So there's the big thing. I told somebody the other day and almost got into a fisticuffs fight with somebody because they said, oh, no, that Dwayne started that. No. And then I talked to somebody else, and they said, did you know that I – and it was – I don't know if I can say his name, so I won't. He goes, did you know I actually owned that for like 15 minutes? Whoever started it sold it to this person, mm-hmm. and then like with a handshake, and then backed out of like the handshake, and then Dwayne bought it. Now, right. could be a different story. If Dwayne watches this, I don't want you right. not making my pizza good. I you mean, know? Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne is the owner in my eyes. I mean, yeah. Uh, for I'd, all always. But, uh, yeah. But, who yeah. started it? Do you remember? Well, I, I don't remember the name. I know Rick Benson knows who, who started it. Okay. But, uh, so some guy started Has it always been at that location? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. And I used to that, – that was kind of the spot that when I came home from college that Dad and I always went to, and I just got great memories. We went every Thursday night taking the kids there. and Yeah. I mean, it's an institution. I yeah. Ho- I hope they get back open. Yeah, I do too. So, All right, so let's go back to the revitalization of downtown <clears throat> because that's where your current restaurant is, Blue Sky right. Brewery. And what's funny is your Blue Sky Brewery is in the place that I know is, is home for me, know, Anderson Leather Shop. That's what's so fun about this conversation. Yeah. It goes, it's just this big turn, isn't it? I always thought that you were going to buy that. Do you, you know? know, I think that's, I thought I was supposed to. You I know. know, like I... I when Andy was uh, working with me, the plan was to to buy Anderson Leather, you know, and run it. Uh, yeah, forever. a transition. Yeah, a yeah. little transition, yeah. and it, you know, fate came in there. I was selling a pair of boots one day to a guy, and he said, "Man, you're a great salesperson." He goes, "I ought to hire you to sell copy machines." John Gilpin. I don't know if you knew John Gilpin. Yeah. And uh, so John gave me, you know, not double the money, but gave me a nice little thing, and I was like, "Hey, Andy, I'm going to go sell copy machines." You yeah. know, the the money's uh, in there, and and uh, we stayed great friends, and yeah. Then the fire happened, right? Um, and then it became vacant, and then you guys. So tell, let's go all the way back, <clears throat> rewind to how this idea of Blue Sky Brewery came about. Right. So 
um, <clears throat> obviously I'd been in the business for a long time between shooters, um, cozy in paramount. And, and we did skip, skip a brief couple years. I actually had a pool hall downtown too called CJ's. We're I don't on, remember that. We're on the pot is. Okay. So if you, if you, I mean, I remember laying that floor and if you look in there, uh, the, the glass, you know, with their counter was the bar and it was an old bank. And then we used the uh, old vault back there as our cooler. So that was Planner State Bank. So okay. anyways, so I'd been in all these businesses, <clears throat> got out of them. Um, but that's really kind of always been my love. Well, you're an and, entrepreneur. Yeah, it's just heart. so. Yeah. So I, I, I did, did enjoy my time at Wesleyan. And so, uh, but at the same time, I just was like, gosh, it'd be fun to get back in there. Um, I taught, I was the head of the master's program also. So, and I taught some classes. And one of the classes I taught was entrepreneurship. And so that class came to me and didn't want to necessarily work out of a book. They wanted to work on a project. And um, in the back of my mind, I always knew that a brewery was going to come into Salina somehow. And I just thought, um, you know, if I could be part of that, that that would be great. So we just started working on the project of a, of a brewery and just, you know, the menu ideas and, you know, doing some of the, of the things. And so um, that was just that semester. And so... And I know some of the stories are that they did all the work. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard. And, yeah. I thought it was brilliant, though. Yeah. When I heard that story, I went, Monty is amazing. He puts a class together <laughs> of a bunch of masters. They figure everything yeah. out. Yeah. He gives them all an A. They yeah. graduate, and he takes all of their paperwork and goes down and starts and a company. Starts, starts in my business. It's brilliant. Don't change that. That's the okay. story. We'll you stick know? with that story. There's, it's, it's been a um, Stretch just a little bit, okay, but that's well, okay. I, Let's stick with that story. <laughs> so, it's, it's great. Uh, yeah. So let, what's the truth story? <clears throat> no, 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 they did help uh, okay. a little bit. And then um, then it just became something that I uh, then I, I approached uh, um, Slina downtown, and we, we started working on the funding. And um, you just have to have, um, I, you know, I didn't necessarily have $500,000 sitting in my bank account. So, right. you know, I had to fund it somehow. And and uh, during the funding process, you, you know, you get an SBA loan. You just really have to have your business plan nailed down. So I spent about a year um, taking the original kind of the project and, and fine-tuning it into a business plan to get the loans. So anyway, so. I mean, How did the location come about then? Had you always thought, like when you got, did you have the location and you just kind of went to Brian and said, hey, I'm trying to get this SBA. We hold it for me. Did you get all the SBA done and the location opened up? How did that all work? <clears throat> yeah, so it all, I mean, um, happened together, actually. Uh, the fire happened. Uh, <clears throat> this is really weird. You're working on an SBA loan. You you like this location. No, no, and no, no, all no. of a sudden, a fire, fire happens. happens. <laughs> yeah, so, is, so now the real reason yeah. comes out. No, really, uh, I was working on it without a location at the time. And then, and then the fire happened. Uh, Brian Richardson came in and, and bought the building. Um, I'd always kind of uh, looked up to Brian. You know, he, he's, he's done so much for downtown. And I just thought, okay, probably can't afford to start the business and buy the building. Yep. You know, uh, that just probably wasn't. In the back of my mind, I was still sitting there thinking about the shooter's days and the lack of control. But I felt comfortable in, uh, with Brian and approached Brian about the project. So, yep. so that's... That's kind of how our relationship happened. So okay, and then what? What would? What's the? So you opened this up ten years ago on there. Mm -hmm. um, tell us about the brewing side. Did you learn? Did because I think you kind of uh, allocated that to somebody else. How does that actually work? Then the brewing <coughs> side of everything over there. Because you weren't really a mat. Did you know much about brew? No, brewing no, beer? no. I was just I was just more um, just knew that that was going to be the niche. So if I did it, I said, well, you know, I enjoyed shooters and I enjoyed Paramount, but, um, you know, and I enjoy drinking beer. And, and so you sit there and say, but I want to do it a, another level. And so I just, I just knew with the trends going on around the country that a brewery was going to do good. I, I wasn't even a home brewer at the time. Mm. So I hired um, John Gertson, who mm. was a firefighter, mm. and um, he, he helped pick out the equipment and everything. Um, it was always still my business. I mean, I, I'm, I'm the sole owner of, and always have been, of, of Blue Sky. But uh, John was a home brewer that was just ready to take the next step. And, and interesting, a, a lot of brewers are firefighters. 
Mm. Um, just because of their schedule, three days on, four days right. off, uh, that sort of thing, and their knowledge of hoses <laughs> and <laughs> latching some things and up. drinking so, beer, and, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, and my passion has always been more in the kitchen. So, um, you know, I just kind of delegated things to him. So, and and it worked out well. Um, Who's your current brewer now? Uh, John Tadigan. Okay. Um, and so he's a retired police officer. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. Correct. And. And he works down at the McPherson Refinery. You know, most brewers are, at, at our level um, aren't full-time. Okay. Um, the brewing process is at about an eight-hour day, and then after that, you just come back at about 15 minutes every day to check on the fermentation process. So it's nobody has to be there full-time. Yeah. Um, his assistant brewers, one, uh, you know, runs the museum, and then another one's the radiologist at the hospital. <laughs> so. Wow. That's cool. I know. What's your biggest surprise, you think, from opening that blue sky? Like if there's an entrepreneurial person watching right now, I always like to turn these from community leader of what you've done for the community to if they're watching it going, okay, how do I create something like a blue sky that's there? What's one thing that was either a surprise to you or you would – that's really helped you out or you look back and go, gosh, I wish I wouldn't have done that or I wish I didn't – would have done this. Yeah, <clears throat> I think some of the construction kind of surprised me. Just, just uh, how how hard that ended up being. Um, you know, just taking a. You know, Brian obviously secured the building and put the new roof on, and um, he he gave a great shell to me. But I th- I, th- I think the the construction uh, took a lot longer than I thought. The build out. The, the build well, out. We had to cut out the floor to put the vats. Or I call them vats. Is that right. what they're called? Yeah, I'm sure. Not sure what they're tanks, vats, tanks. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, so, you know, yeah, because <clears throat> then, you know, bringing in all that load, um, the engineer says, uh, this, this isn't going to work. Yeah. <laughs> and so that's an old building. That's actually the original jail. See, so. I remember that. When I worked there, I would go upstairs, and it had the old stove pipes coming out about every four or five feet. Right. And I asked Andy one time that was, and he said, it, well, this, was the old, this was the jail. Right. And each cell had its own stove and they had to keep it going. I mean, that's how old that is. I every know. every one of them had their own stove that well, they had I, to keep the heat going or they froze to death, I guess. And one of the nice surprises with that is, you know, I was like taken aback about the cost of having to do all that. But at the very end, you know, we were broke and, and I, I didn't have any tables. And I was like, oh my, what am I going to do? And I looked over and saw all the joices and the you know, that we had taken out, and we just turned those into all of our tables. Yeah, so. but that's the magic of that place. <clears throat> I mean, you can tell that those tables are all hand-built. Yeah. And, and, and you again, that's a great little story is you took out all of the floor joices on, uh, that's 119, isn't mm-hmm. it? Something like that, 119? 18. 118, yeah. yeah, 118. You took out all the floor joices to put the vats in. Right. And then, that's, then you made the tables right. out so, of the old floor joices. So, you know, we counted, you know, so that building was built – we thought in 1980 or 1888, so that's how old that wood was. But we counted over 120 rings in the wood, so that you know that's wood from 1700s, yeah. you know, going back. And so that's 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 kind of fun. It that was a nice surprise. Yeah. Um, that you know, just um, if I could tell you know, pass anything along, I just think you know, find your passion, you know, build a start a business around some passion that you have. Because you're going to spend a lot more time on there than you think. Yeah. And it's going to be a lot harder than you think. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good about delegating, um, especially as I've gotten older and my kids are there. But, um, you know, it's still pretty time consuming. Yeah. So. Well, and for you, you found the right spouse because yeah. the hours that you work running a restaurant or a mm-hmm. bar mm-hmm. or something like that is, <clears throat> I mean, it's very demanding. It, it is. It, it, it's, it's fun. Yeah. And, and again, as I've gotten a little older and everything, I, I don't work very much nights there anymore, or very, very uh, seldom. But, you know, we still have seven days a week go in there, 6.37 yeah. in the morning. And, and Well, I was there eating the other night. Oh, no, what was that? it was on Sunday morning. I think we were having mm-hmm. uh, brunch, brunch after church. Mm-hmm. And I walk around the corner, so I'm like, hey, is Monty in there? Like, yeah, he's back there. I, like, I don't know that you, I wouldn't want to say you were doing dishes, but I love watching you like right. you were in there doing what you love, you know, yeah. and helping out. And 
I love that, that it's not this guy who starts a business and then sits up there and just with his cigar in his mouth and right. counts the money. Right. It's like sometimes you got to roll up your sleeves, go yeah. help. And I know that means a lot to those people down there working, that yeah. you're in there actually grinding it out with them. Right. And Sundays are a perfect example. All five Shadwicks are, are, are down there working in the kitchen. And Janelle's washing dishes and running up stuff. And Annie is... Annie's was the server that day, and then my, the three of us are in the back cooking. Yeah, but it's nice. Uh, you know, we we've, we've just decided. I mean, we we open from nine thirty to one thirty, and then we're closed the rest of the day. And so it's just a it's just a it's just a great five hours, and then you've got the rest of your day. Yeah. So yeah, let's talk about. I may surprise you on this one too, and if you don't feel comfortable, let me know the Star Bond. Mm -hmm. Okay, I don't. I know very <clears throat> little about the Star Bond in downtown. Um, do you feel comfortable enough talking about that to educate yeah. on how that's all going to work? Of you know when does that eventually run out? So the funding came in did for all the street sewer and everything, and then did people? So tell me what you know about the Star Bond, how that came about. Yeah, that's um, <clears throat> and I know fifty percent. I mean, okay. I was not part of that original group, uh, twenty twenty, uh, right? The original group that kind of spearheaded that, and of course Trace and Larry Bridigan and me. I'm, I'm forgetting some names, but. Uh, you know, they really spearheaded it and did a great job. But they, they had to go to the state and secure funding. And um, it's over a 20-year period. And um, we had to do some things downtown. Um, you know, we had to have enough people that were interested in doing that. I mean, they just you just can't get the funding and 10 people decided right. on this project. So, so I think from the very start, though, didn't they come in and draw an area they and draw, say, okay, here's where it is. And it had to do a little bit of what they tried to incorporate – I think what I what I know is what was the tax basis for the outlined area before the Star Bond right. and then how do they raise the tax a little bit down there to pay back the Star Bond is right. that correct Right so, so you know you're hoping that uh, after after things happen that the tax base is increased and then that helps pay that back Yeah and then but but we also had to have I think it was 60% of the people downtown needed to say okay um, we also passed the one cent sales tax too. Uh -huh. So there was, there was a lot of things going on there. So, um, there had to be a museum portion in it, uh, which was a state requirement. And of course we got the garage out of that, which wow. is just huge for downtown right now. Yeah. Um, we had Guy Gross on here and we talked about the yard, the yard and right. how that came about and, the uh, bowling Brian, alley. what's that? And the bowling alley, the bowling came alley. That. Uh, Brian Richardson was on here. We talked about the birth of the field house right. and how much that almost didn't make it downtown. Right. You know, they wanted to, uh, I remember the, the fights at the city commission of moving it south or what they really wanted to do, I think, is put it next to the Bicentennial Center. Right. Uh, tear down the old county thing that's there. Uh, I don't know whether that had been right or wrong. I just know that's what, but I do know that we probably wouldn't be where we're at downtown. Uh, I think specifically from the, I won't put words in Trace's mouth because I didn't hear him say it, but... I heard that he did say this, that, you know, they probably wouldn't have built the hotel had the field house not gone in and some other starting start yeah. to happen. Yeah, that's just part of the, um, just another piece in the puzzle. I yeah. mean, uh, one thing didn't uh, create everything um, great right now. It's just, it's been a lot of people, a lot of guy grosses. There have been just yeah. a lot of, you know, the walkers, obviously, Um and the garage and the and the bowling alley. I mean, that just it's yeah. just amazing to me how many people do that. Yeah, the amount of money that's been invested downtown is crazy. crazy. Yeah, crazy. crazy in the right. in the lot of it. And and we're not done. No. You know what I mean? Like we're not done. There there'll be some uh, exciting stuff happening. I mean, the Prairie Market's coming. Right. Where they're going to do some cooking inside there and have people come in and uh, and the Prairie Market's been around. Somebody told me for forty five years. In some form or another. Yeah, I know. And right. so everybody's going to think this new business opened up, but they've right. been in business for 45 years right. and then currently are over on 5th on and Walnut. 5th and Walnut, mm -hmm. small little thing. Yeah. But, um, I go in there from time to time and buy some burritos sure. that they make and these organic things and what visibility they're going to have now by coming downtown. And then the, the, the bookstore that went in, you know, yeah, I mean, it's just, just, it's, it's all great stuff. Yeah, I've, I've just had some uh, friends that I met on a cruise, and, you know, they live in Scottsdale or in Evergreen, and they all came in and stayed at the hotel. And we, uh, we there was actually a steeple event going on that night, so things were happening. There was, yeah. a, there was a band at the Prickly Pear, and things were happening. And, to, you know, they just loved Slida. They just could not believe yeah. it. They loved the bookstore. 
And then the next day when I had to, I had to cook on Saturday, and so I just said, well, you guys just walk downtown. I see them with, you know, bags from the market shop, and yeah. you know, they're, they're spending money. And yeah. it was just it was a really good feeling. It's a long ways from, you know, when we opened Shooters. Um, I think after the bank had left, it was just Shooters and Stiefel on that entire block. Yeah, and so you talked about tumbleweeds. It was pretty close. <laughs> I remember we had all of our employees park right out in front of our place just to make you know make it look like look like something's like going we were on. Open. Yeah, <laughs> so I do know uh, where the yesterday I saw on Facebook where uh, the axe throwing place is mm-hmm. is now going to be a golf simulator. Yeah, well, that, that's going to they, they're going to open up sometime in December, and all of this is just it, you know it just keeps rolling. Yeah. And it just didn't start with the star bonds. I mean, I mean, if you go back, I mean, there's good. There were good things happening before. I mean, probably the b- before the star bonds and before the hotel. Um, probably the best thing was obviously the steeple. Um, you know, yeah. that, that sat empty, and and the the city uh, actually had foresight to put on a new roof. So um, they city didn't necessarily want to own it, but at the same time, that didn't want to see it deteriorate, and so the taxpayers. Um, stepped up and put a new roof on it and and then of course you know that happens and and that was huge yeah i can remember the vote um seems like it was to spend a million dollars to just try and preserve it to get it yeah. closed in and man people around here just went crazy yeah that you know, we were going to spend a million dollars yeah the original that. the original budget i mean i think it was just 2.4 million is what it cost to bring that back to life. I and mean, you couldn't do that for 10 million no. today, I wouldn't think. No. But, so that that was huge. Um you know, KU Med moving downtown. Yep. I I, th- I think that was that was big. I think one of the biggest and um uh, I don't think it gets enough credit but it brings people off the interstate is the sculpture tour. Mm, yep. Well, yeah. the sculpture tour, and I know Mike Hoppick does a phenomenal job with that, of yeah. putting that in. But now uh, we had, um, gosh, I'm going to forget his, um, what's Lee's son? Travis Young. Yeah. So Travis Young was on here, and yeah. he's spearheading the art on the, the Boom murals, Project, the Boom yeah. Project mm-hmm. which we just had them back through here again. So, again, I'm thinking all these people 20 years from now watching this video, they're going to see all that art painted on the walls and go, okay, how did that come about? Yeah. And you know, and like there's this whole boom thing, and uh, God, what's the metaphor for boom? I can't remember what. Oh, because they they paint them on booms. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. duh, I guess that's on there. But I didn't. It didn't hit ring with me until that's why they call it boom is because they need to rent all these boom lifts to right. paint the side of the buildings and the grain uh, silos and all that stuff. Uh, what's your take on that? What do you uh, think oh, about I, the? I think I think it's fantastic. I mean. Um... Now I'm now I'm sitting here going, why don't I have one on the back of my building? Right. <laughs> yeah. Know? I own several buildings downtown, and there was, you know, one. I've got one on Fifth Street, kind of across from the donut shop, and uh, I'm thinking, going, well, God, I've got a white space. I could paint that building yeah. white and have those, you right. know, and pay Ooh. somebody to next year. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I think this is a now. Year I think thing. though, this is just me talking. So Travis, I'm sorry, I'm going to say this. I think at some point enough will be enough, or yeah. we'll have every building paint it right. Right, right. you know and they'll come to town and i just i think some of right. it will lose its luster so i right. think that we can get those painted and then maybe we either a different project or we do some different painting yeah do something somewhere else around town absolutely i mean i think it's a work in progress and you, you just public art is never ending yeah and so we just have to look at other ways to do that and public art can be in, in new buildings too i mean the style i mean the united building didn't have to have anything painted on that. It's a beautiful building because yeah. it's an Art Deco building. Yeah, and, and some of so, them you wouldn't want to. Like right. if they said they wanted to paint the United Building, yeah. I'd be like going, okay, yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's probably a little too much. Yeah, but, um, yeah. But I was walking. I try to walk back and forth to work a lot, and I love walking down Santa Fe and saw two people um, looking at the murals, taking pictures, and and looking at the art. And I just said, I just got to ask, where are you from? And they said, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. And, yeah. And we, they just heard about it and pulled off the interstate, and you know, had lunch downtown and. And, and did some things so that's just that's fun to hear yeah yeah it is and again some stuff i can't let out but i know many of my friends entrepreneurial guys who are working on projects that we can't really disclose yet right. that's all downtown and then we've got this whole uh river project coming if that thing goes through right. and they build that amphitheater mm-hmm. uh, across from the garage I can imagine all of those buildings on uh, fourth street where the tracks are right. across from the yard and the garage I mean, this thing could just, 
I mean, right. God, I hope I live for another 25 years. I think it's going to be amazing to see what happens in that whole area. I think that's the next growth section is everything from the garage along the river and cleaning all that up. And to, to the park. Into the park, yeah. Into the park. Um, so, you know, the, the next things that we probably need to see is we, d- we need more people living downtown. And, you know, lofts are great, but they're, they're one and done. Yeah. Um, you know, you just need to start seeing, you know, from the hotel to the park um, would be great. There's just, there's some area. Well, they've already cleared out some of the yeah. area, you know. And yep. then you've got the old uh, high school spot that's been sitting empty since 1950. You've just got some areas where some housing needs to happen. Yeah, what is, was that a high school over there? Yeah, um, Washington High School. That okay. was b- before Central. See, that needs to be just like bulldozed in a nice apartment complex go up there. Right, and so, you know, USD 305 still owns it. I mean, the taxpayers still own it. Yeah. Um, and you so, know how much people I'm going to get writing in going, you just can't take a school and demo it, Todd. And, but the, you know. but, uh, but the, dem- uh, the demo's already happened. This was this, That's the vacant land that's right as soon as you go into the well, park. What's the, what's the building next to it then? There's still a structure yeah. there, but I can't remember what well, it is. Well, that's still being used uh, okay. by the school. That, okay. that you probably don't need to... We, don't need to tear down. <laughs> oh, okay. I want to tear it all down, the whole block. But, but, uh, but yeah, that, that lot has been sitting empty since Central was built. So, you know, that, that could be used for housing. There, there, are, there are just some strategic places that need to, you know, more people need to live near downtown yeah. and, near, uh, and near the hospital. Yeah, I agree. And, and the old journal would have been a good place too, but the hospital bought that for right. their accounting and all right. that. Mm-hmm. And then I think they just bought the consolidated printing building for Correct. more stuff that's there. The one that's going to be interesting to see what happens, and I think it'll just maybe be there forever, but I'm trying to figure out a use for it, is the, um, oh, what's next to the Sonic, the big... The Masonic Temple. The Masonic Temple. Right. Like, what happens to the Masonic Temple? That's the... I mean, I think it's great what's going on with it now. They're still preserving it. Wedding venues go on there now, right. and I think a non-for-profit yeah. basically took it over. Right. And they gave it to them, but I still think there's a, a big high use for that that could show up some point right. that would be nice just takes money yeah <laughs> that is true that is true grant money from somewhere yes yeah, so, yeah. yes somebody yeah. else's money <laughs> somebody else's, exactly well hey man we could talk here forever it's been 46 yeah. minutes I, right. I could just talk forever with you especially about downtown and right. uh, your love for salina my love for salina right. Uh, especially for the downtown and not to say there isn't some great stuff. There's a lot of people investing money out South. Sure. Uh, not take away from them of where it's at, but uh, there's, there's a buzz downtown and, and a lot of the entrepreneurs that I know, I hang out downtown. So I know all of these right. people uh, that are doing some stuff. And um, um, so if you get, um, uh, I'm wanting Larry Britt to come on. Okay. He said, he's not good at speaking and talking, which I, don't know so i'm going to need some push from you so if he watches this i'd love to get his take on it trace walker uh i saw him in passing at the, the charlie walker pitch challenge and i said man i got to get you on and he kind of went mm. he goes maybe guy maybe you could get guy on so they all would be fantastic yeah and, and larry knows how to talk <laughs> and larry does but you know what's good about larry i think what he really said it's not that he didn't want to talk but he's pretty humble yeah so he's done a lot for the everything that's going on too behind the scenes yeah and, uh, well, his story is fascinating, you know. See, I don't the, know his story at all, yeah, so I want to know. St. John's this. Military School, and then, you know, then he just became, uh, started working for uh, my dad down at the bank, I you know, and then, bank. And, and he's just been involved in a lot of things in town. So. Yeah. So yeah, when his, you see him. His knowledge, his institutional knowledge needs to be. Filmed. Yeah. So anybody watching this, if you know Larry Brittigan, um tap him on the shoulder and say, hey, you think you need to be on Community Leader Podcast because he is the guy that I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like to get on here before the end of the year. I want to be able to do that. So anything else, any closing remarks you got for no, I appreciate uh, being on this and, and uh, appreciate everything that you've done for downtown too. So and we're not done yet, are we? No, we are not. <laughs> no, like we're not done. I still so. got a, an idea in the back of my mind. Well, I so. have a couple myself, so right. it's, it'll be interesting on, on <laughs> well, what happens. And it's probably the same building. <laughs> well, gosh, I, I hope not, okay. but, but maybe so. Um, anyway, Monty, thank you for everything you've yeah. done, uh, the history, uh, what your family has. And again, I think we've got some big stuff still coming for downtown Salina. I appreciate you. I appreciate you being a community leader for Salina, an thank advocate, you. and everything you've done. So Thank you. Thank, thank you very you. much. Yep.